Welcome to Beyond the Sermon podcast, where we hope to stir your faith by pulling truths from the sermons at Believer's Fellowship and discussing them here together. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode on Beyond the Sermon. I'm Heather Alligato, your host, and our guests today are two very special people to me. My husband, aka the hottest man the alive, <laughs> <laughs> the special of the special, <laughs> Jonathan Alligato, and Pastor Maddie Freed. Hello, Heather. I'm glad you're both Hello, here. Jonathan. Yeah. So you two have never been on a podcast. This together. is season four together. Yeah. Yes. I have kept you separated for a long I, time. I am, I am humbled to I be in the presence of such greatness. <laughs> his nose is growing. Pinocchio. <laughs> so be nice. Be nice. No, I'm just okay. kidding. No, I, I, today's uh, podcast is about a sermon Pastor did in 2022. It's when we were in the tent, actually, because yeah. we're under construction. By the way, speaking of construction, we're under construction. So if you hear any weird noises, it's not us. All right. <laughs> Blame the workers, <laughs> not us. It is construction. Uh, we are moving and progressing. So, anyways. He did this sermon, Pastor John, back in 2022, two years ago. We were in the tent. It was called He Is, I Am. Yes. We chose a sermon that was kind of in the middle of the whole series. I felt like it did a good review up to that point. Yes. He really touched on a lot of He Is, I I Am. I chose it because of identity, really is why I chose it. because. It's very important how we see ourselves, Mm -hmm. how we see ourselves in a godly, healthy way. Having a healthy, godly view of ourselves is extremely important. I got this from Joyce Meyer, a book I'm reading of hers. She said, among other things, it will determine your level of confidence, affect the way you evaluate the opportunities that come your way and influence your relationships with God and others. What you think of yourself isn't nearly as important. What others think of you isn't nearly as important as what you think of yourself. Yes. So she was saying self-image matters. I don't think that's selfish. I think it's necessary. If I'm a Christian and I know who God is, that's great. That's, that's, I, I need to know who my father is. I need to know who my God is. As I was listening to this sermon, I was reflecting and thinking, but I need to know who I am in Christ. I need to know what does God say about me? And I need to believe that so that I can be free because there's only one truth. Yes. Correct. There's only yeah. one truth. And there's so many truths out there. People say, people say, well, this is my truth and this is my truth. But as Christians, we have one truth truth. The way we view the world is through the Bible, through the lens of the Bible. So the way I view myself has to be through the eyes of God. Yeah, I think um, just right off top in Colossians chapter three and and verse four, you said, and it said, great, I understand who God is. I understand and I see who God is. Well, in, in reference to that, when I clearly see who Jesus is, what his purpose for life was, and what he came to restore, when I truly see that, understand it, and adhere to that, I truly see why I'm here, my purpose, and who I am. Colossians 3 and verse 4 says, And as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, who you really are will also be revealed, for you are now one with him in his glory. Hmm. That's not selfish. That's humble. But say, well, he's God. I'm, I'm not God. I'm not worthy to be like him. Well, that's, that's honestly, that's prideful. Because if he has called you worthy and he's called you to a greater purpose, who am I to say, oh, no, God, you've made a mistake? Mm-hmm. No, I am who he says I am. And I can do what he says I can do. And I have what he says I have. According to what? My truth? No, according to the truth truth that right. subst- we were just talking about this that surpasses all generations all uh, uh 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 family lineages maybe that were that were wrong or 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 uh strongholds in my mind that maybe i constructed through through the hardships of life his truth 
trumps all that and renews my mind according to who I am because of who he is. That reminds me of the seven uh, I am statements that Pastor went yes. through in this um, series. And one of those seven I am statements said, I am the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it that one just really stands out in the group. It's coupled together for one thing. Mm-hmm. It's coupled together with three components of who he is, three I am statements in one large statement that the Christ said, and the anointing spoke this over himself. I am, like when God told Moses what to say. Yes. I am am the eternal i am that i am the truth statement means everything else ain't Come on, <laughs> the only right. thing that is truth <laughs> is him yes. and his word um i believe that i have devoted my life to that that's who i am I am seeking after who he is. And it's amazing to me how many times the Lord has allowed that to just be um, visualized. I I actually see it in working in my life. And what happens when people don't have that basis? I, I can't stand this kind of philosophy, but it's, I call it the Oprah philosophy, my truth. Mm. Yes. You know, what's your truth? And, and I would rather people really say, well, my opinion, it's not my truth. Right. Or right. this is my view. This is what I, I think I saw, you know, but it's not truth. Truth is truth. What I think or my opinion is not truth. And I honestly believe that so many times we're thinking of our opinion because of what our daddy said to us when we were seven, you know, we hear that over and over in our head, whatever, and we call that truth. No, what is truth is what we should have playing over and over in yes. our head, who God said I am. Yeah, if, if there's, if you have a truth and I have a truth and she has a truth, well then. Who's right? Truth is malleable. Me. Oh, <laughs> but truth truth isn't clay. It's not play doh. It's a rock. Yes, right, right. It's right. a rock. The rock on which we stand. Correct. That's and right. I can't build. I don't build my life, my house on clay. I build it on rock. It's very. I don't know how people live that way. I would. That what would be way? very confusing to always have a different truth. You can just change your truth. How you feel? Yeah. Oh, oh, that sounds good over there. I'm going to add that to my truth. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. The I'm scriptures stop say they're this. unstable Come in on, all I was their just ways. Thinking that. It is so confusing. They're swayed back yeah, and the forth. The wind, the wind blows them whichever yes. way. But the Christian, uh huh, the Christian has their truth founded in the Word of God. So when someone challenges and says, "Why do you believe that?" Well, I didn't got write the rock. that. Let me tell you. You know. Matthew, da, da 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 da. Let me show you. So it's not our truth, like like you were saying, Pastor Maddie. It's me saying, let me show, tell you about the truth that I believe. Yes. How I see the situation, I see it through the lens of God. That is stable, and Come that's on. how we build our identity. Amen. I, you said two words in your entry. Um, you, you talked about in Christ and the Christian's view. Those two statements, huge. We think differently than the world. Amen. We behave different. At least we ought to. We behave differently. We think differently. We respond differently because the truth is not only before our eyes where we could have that measurement, that guard of truth, but it's also in, he has written it in our hearts. Yes. And that makes all the difference in the world to me, mm-hmm. that I have that truth inside of me. Isn't it cool when you're just talking about something and you do this really great because your eyes just get real big and happy. You know, mm-hmm. when you hear something that sparks a scripture in your life, you just go, boy, yeah. it's just there. Well, where is it? It's in me. It's inside of you. And the word has been written down so it can be. He has written his word in our hearts, the fleshly table of our heart, so that we could be excited every time we see the truth. My father did that. 
every time we see it unfold, my dad, yeah. my dad, my God, my God did that. My Jesus allowed for that. Mm-hmm. And that's how we build our identity. Something um, that I need to stay away from in my own life, and I encourage parents to stay, you know, self worth and self-identity and uh, who you think you are. That's really important in today's world. They shout it from the rooftops, but you have nothing to build on if you don't build it on the scripture. That's right. It is pure sand. Yes. Yes. And if you build your house upon the sand, it the storms of life will come and blow it down. It will be blown to smithereens, but the house that's built upon the rock, is there story like that yes so the house that's built upon the rock will stand it's stable it's stable it's secure it's consistent it stands the test of time Mm -hmm. and that's really good and that's why i really appreciated these i am statements that the that the lord that the lord (laughs) gave that that jonathan our pastor said during this those i am i'm gonna read a couple of them okay so and I'll do it very quickly. So John 4, 48, God said, he is the bread of life. Oh, I know it. And I'm a slice of bread. And I'm a slice of bread. <laughs> we know, this is how we apply this to our identity. I know where people can get fed. Yeah. I'm a slice of bread. I have something for you to eat. Are you hungry? Are you dissatisfied? Let me feed you. I tell the dudes in the jail that all the time. I said, bro, I said, I was once a beggar. But I found some bread, and I'm just relaying to a beggar where you can find bread. Yes. Apostle Wayne would teach us that. I love that. It's so simple. Yeah. Simple. Another one. He is the light. Mm. How we apply that? We are the light. Come on. We are hidden in the light. The light is in us. When we walk into a dark place, Jesus is shining, shining through us. I think it's miraculous. Some people think that darkness overcomes light, but light overcomes darkness every time. Yeah, yeah. Every time. We never say, hey, it's too bright in here. Will you turn up the darkness? (laughs) No. Will you turn down the light? That's good. That that is good. That's the funniest thing you've ever said. (laughs) Pastor John would always says, now I say always, so you can challenge me, but anytime. So if you're okay. So when Pastor John's preaching, when he brings this up, he almost always does this. The light is not struggling. Like, ooh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, let me Final. overcome the darkness. It's just ding. Nope. Just and simple. He's, God said, Jesus said, I am the light. Light. Anybody comes to me, he's not going to be in darkness anymore. Yeah, because the light of life will be in. And then, and then in Matthew 5, 14, he says, you are the light. You took the words right out of my mouth. And so there is our identity. That's our identity. And if we're looking to the world, they'll say things like, well, honey, you don't have anything to give. You ain't no light. But Jesus said, I am the light. Jesus gave me permission to say, yes. like he said, I'm you light. Are the light of the and world. I break darkness's back. Yeah. Darkness has no power Easily. over me. Easily. Oh, it's a I just gotta There's walk no in the room. I All walk, I in, the walk room in the room and light comes. Smack the devil around. Now, <laughs> I don't always feel like I can Come do on. that, but it has nothing to do with my feelings. That's right. It has everything to do with what can he said. Can you say said. that again? It That's has right. nothing to do with what? My feelings, how I feel about the situation. Amen. Facts don't care about my feelings. My feeling is sub- subsequent, less than... Uh, just the bodice, it is subservient to what God's word already declares. That's why my mouth, and I know that you have covered a lot on the podcast about confession, but it is absolutely imperative that we speak what we know God said we are. So here's right. what he said. He said, we're the light. We have to say we're the light. That's right. He said, I'm the light. I say, I'm the light because I say what I, I only say what I hear my father say. I only say, I only do, I only perform that which the Holy Spirit is already asking me to perform. I, 
I like that because is she shaking her finger? My finger in so trouble. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning, when I was talking about self-image, uh -huh. I, people can take that in such a negative way. I know a godly self-image. Yes, it's not about you. To say who you are in Christ to remind is so important. If I don't have a healthy, godly self-image of myself, I cannot love people the way that I need to love them. And I cannot love myself. And I know mm -hmm. in a godly, healthy way, I need to love myself in a godly manner. Lord, thank you for making me how you made me. I don't, I don't despise myself. Yes. I, yeah. That is so important. So many scriptures. So important. So many scriptures come to mind when talking about that. But one of them is in the parable of the uh, four plots of land. By the way, there's nowhere in the scriptures that says it's for one quarter each. I, I really sincerely doubt any farmer in their right mind would take one quarter of their seed and throw it on the bad right. ground on purpose. Right. You right, know, on so purpose, right. on purpose. Some fell to the ignorance. wayside. Yes, yeah, some The majority fell. of it. Went to the good ground. Right. Now, how we respond. One of the phrases in that parable, very striking to me, is having no root in themselves. The seed, it grew, but then having no root in themselves, it dies. What happens is when we don't have a root of who we are in Christ, that which the Holy Spirit is putting in us dies. Right. And right. it has no root. Now, how do I have a root? How do I have um, good ground? I mean, how do I make that planting? I, pref I allow the word of God to be in me and through me so that I could say what he says. You're again, you're saying that word and you're implanting that word in there. It's so important. It's not about your self image. It's about your godly Come self image. It's on. about your biblically sound self image. Let us make That's man right. in our image. In his image. We and are when nothing yes. by ourselves. We are nothing. I love Keith Moore whenever he teaches on uh, you don't like him other times, just <laughs> <laughs> like other times too. But <laughs> whenever he he st makes this uh, statement, you can't even brush your teeth without the Lord. You can't even comb your hair without the Lord. He's speaking of humility. I am mm. everything we have, everything that that is in our life, all the goodness, the health, the the ev every single thing that we have is because it came first from the Lord's hand. Pastor yes. Wayne, no, Pastor John oftentimes says he's never seen a day without the goodness of God. And you're thinking about that. I'm thinking about that. What do you mean? I've had some down days. God was still good to me. Yes. He is still even good to me. Even when you were born a sinner. Even when I was rooted in sin, even when I was doing wrong and know, knowingly His doing wrong, His mercy good. is always there. His mercy. And so people can do all those things. It's still the mercy and the goodness of God that allows them to breathe, let alone brush their teeth. I mean, it is God. I, 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 I'm also impressed with the fact that when we have a self-image that's outside of God, even when it's really a good self-image and we're doing all this really good sure. stuff, no, just that is a fleeting opportunity for us. It is not long-lasting, mm -hmm. does it? What mm -hmm. is eternal is only what is written in the Word. Amen. Amen. He is the door. The access point. <laughs> he is the door. Pastor said, you know what that means? You're the access point. Yeah. You make access. We lead people to Jesus. Yep. Whereby we we cry. Be We have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Whereby we cry. Be reconciled unto God. Who's going to do that? The fivefold ministry? No. Every believer. That's right. Forget the fivefold ministry. Believers. That's and right. it's not only for salvation. Come on. It is for helping people remain joyful. It is, you know, I really feel I've been called to the church. Now, of course, we have all been called to to spread the gospel. I'm, I'm do not diminish that. I, I do not. 
But I really believe that I have been called, my personal calling is to the church. And oftentimes I'll just answer the phone and talk to somebody for a few minutes. And I ask the Lord every time when they say, I need to ask you a question. I say, Father, I don't want to answer this question of my own self. I'm their access point. You're like, I I don't I'm just a funnel. I am just a funnel. I call it a conduit sometimes. Is that right? Just, just. I think I learned that in a sermon. I have no idea what a conduit <laughs> what is. is. A conduit? I have no. A I think conduit? it's the pipe. May, may, maybe Con it's is? a can do it. I think it's the pipe. But I think they put so, stuff like through it. Yep. You're just a vessel through which he pours out. Like a straw. Like a straw or a pipe. <laughs> okay. Well, whatever that is, I. I just want to flow and I don't want to block. I don't want any blockage in that thing. Have you ever been drinking lemon water, you know, through mm-hmm. a straw and a seed gets in the straw? Oh, yes. Very scary. It is. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just fine. <laughs> <laughs> or you're drinking and all of a sudden nothing's coming through and you're. Something's blocking. <laughs> no, the some, flow. I don't want that. That seed, that lemon seed has its place, but it's not, his place is not in my straw. It's right. not in there. Right. And I do not want any blocking. So when somebody calls me, I first thing off the bat, when they say, well, I'm, I'm saying in my spirit, Father, I, want, I, know, I need to know what you have to say. I need to know what you have to say. Let me speak as an oracle of God. And that access point, that's what it is. Whatever the need is, salvation, healing, preservation, safety, security, whatever the need is, that access point is in me. Yes. When I don't have a good godly self-image, I don't want to talk to anybody. Right. You get that grayed out. You get quiet. You 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 hit the shadows. I shut it out. <clears throat> I, yep. I act like I am not the light. I am definitely not a slice of bread and I am not the door. When I am in me, mm-hmm. mm, I can say bad things about me, but that's not what I want to do. What I want to do is be those points. He said, I am, and so am I. He said, I am, and so am I. Amen. He is the good shepherd. I am, pastor said, how how we apply that to ourselves. I am the under shepherd. If you love me, this was... um, Jesus speaking to Peter. Peter. Okay, thank you. you. Love me, feed my sheep. <laughs> if you love me, he told Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep, take care of my sheep. You think, well, I'm not a pastor. That's not what it was saying. It was saying, take care of his people. Yes. Love the people. All who just the believers know, love the people, love everyone, take care of them, be the access point. Be yeah. the light. Be the slice of bread. I be think the slice of what bread. What has what has held the church back for a long time is that the people have separated themselves from the fivefold. And I'm going to say it like this. They've, they've, they've exalted the fivefold and they're under when, when the reality of what Jesus said is that, that in, in Ephesians, Paul said in Ephesians four, that he gave gifts unto men so that the fivefold can be under the people to lift the people up, to equip them and stir them for the work of the ministry. The people are doing the work of the ministry. So, and then it says in verse 16, it says, speaking the truth in love. In love. That for what reason, Paul? That they may grow into the perfect, mature image of who Christ is. Hmm. Right? There's that image of Christ again. Yes. Yeah, we're all one working together together. Each one doing their own part, each one doing their own part until we come into the unity of the faith and we grow and mature into the image of who he is. Mm-hmm. We need each other. Amen. We need it. God designed it that way. Remember he designed Apostle, us to come together. Apostle Wayne has this beautiful picture of, of, of uh, 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 a pile of coals and they're red hot. But if I pull one of those coals aside and separate it, what happens? It goes it out. Cool. But if I take that same coal that has fizzled out and I stick them right back in the middle of those burning coals, they light back up. up. That's why Paul said, don't forsake gathering together. 
Why? So that you may provoke and stir one another up unto love and good works. Pastor Wayne also said the first banana that leaves the bunch gets peeled. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hate that? Yeah. If there's a little hole in the banana and then I'm like, this is how I think, man, now I have to eat it. This is going to go bad. Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, maybe one day you'll rise to the <laughs> level of believing that you could just throw it away if you don't want it. Let me let me let me say something about the Good Shepherd if I can. Yes. I think of the story I Dan Bean. Dan Bean told the story. So here's this shepherd coming down the hill and the sheepy are following the shepherd, you know. And people say, Man, look how that shepherd looks. He looks great. And then they see the sheep and they have mange. Mm, come on. And they're dirty and they're overgrown and they have stuff hanging out of their ew, gross. You know, it's bad. Yes. They won't call that shepherd a good shepherd. Come on. Mm. When the sheep come down off that hill, fluffy and, and fluffy and, and clean ding, 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 and ding, 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 ding. And they're singing a little song and they're yeah. happy. And people see the sheep and they say, look at those healthy, mm -hmm. secure, well-groomed sheep. Yes. Stable. That's a good shepherd. Mm -hmm. yes. So when people see us as the mange-ridden, lice-eaten sheep, yep. what are they thinking of our father? Correct. And not you're not speak, talking about the pastor. You're talking about... Well, George. about them too. Yeah. But about the under shepherd, about the shepherd, about, but Father God mainly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens when we project an image of unkempt behaviors? Mm -hmm. We are literally degrading who God is. Yes. And I mm -hmm. think that that's a very important piece for us to remember. So I go consistently, I go to Mark Lay's to get my hair cut. I go consistently to the father to get groomed. Come on. Consistently, I go to him for grooming and he helps me and he prunes away that which is uncanny. I continually look in the Looking perfect into law perfect law of, of liberty so I could behold myself in that mirror. Yes. And if you look at that verse, it says, a man beholding his face... And then going away, if you do a deep word study into a man beholding his face, what the Hebrew culture was saying is the face that he's actually seen is not his own. It's the Imago Dei. It's the face of Christ that he sees what he needs to be like. And he's constantly looking at it. And he's constantly, he's constantly allowing changes to be made and little corrections here and there so that he's being perfected into That's the, the image word perfect. of Christ. Yeah. We're perfect. And we're being made perfect, and then and we're going will to be, be perfect. perfect. <laughs> yeah, and it's through the reflection of Christ, Amen. correct? It, like the reflection of the sun onto the moon. It's the reflection of the sun. We are yes. that's changing he us. He is. I am. I am because he is. Yes. As a man thinks, so is so he is he in his heart. He is the resurrection and the life. Pastor applied it to us. He said, I am a life giver. Matthew 10, 8, freely receive, I freely give. I freely received, I freely give. I freely received life, I freely give. I freely received healing, I freely give. I freely received deliverance, deliverance of depression, sickness, emotional problems. You know, you name it. I've been delivered. I freely give. Yeah. I'm a river. Whoever drinks of this water will never, li never likewise thirst again, but, but it shall spring forth from in him into an everlasting river. I mean, into everlasting life. <sighs> There's a lot of people in the church who, and, and Apostle said this earlier, who they, they think these thoughts and they kind of just bow down to them instead of battling. Yeah. Instead of battling, say, Wait a minute, check it at the door. You're not coming in here because this is what's the truth. This is what the truth is. I am free. I am liberated. I am righteous. I am holy. I'm a life giver. I'm well. I'm prosperous. I am a reflection of who my father is. I asked Ryland last night, well, who do sons look like? Their daddy. That's it. It's it's so simple. It, I think, I think in the Christian world, we've made so many 
ease, you know, we've, we've, we've become so analytical, which is simply making simple things complex. Mm -hmm. You're really good at this, Jonathan, but I live with you. So I know, I know a lot about you. You're married, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're married. <laughs> we live together, but I'll be speaking. Now this can be frustrating, blah, but I'll be talking to him about something and then he'll just, I won't say cut me off because that's rude and you're not, you're not rude about it, but he will just start speaking the word. I know. I and I'm with like, somebody just like that. I'm like, I was in the middle of my, he's like, but I don't want to hear that. And then he just starts speaking the word and he just starts speaking what, you know, whatever it, it's relevant to. And I'm just like, but you are really good at that, Jonathan. And so when you, when, if people hear you and they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Jonathan does this. And you're also buttonless. You are very weird, but he is, has the ability to not let things bother him. He just like, and then you think, oh, buttonless. I'm sorry. Yeah, buttonless. He, he didn't have a button to push. He doesn't have a button to push. Now, if I really want to push it, I'm the one. I know them. I know where they're at. But <laughs> you know kidding. where the bodies are hidden. <laughs> but I, that's provoking. That's not of God. I don't do that. But you, you are really okay. good at that. So freely you've been given, freely you give. Yeah. I, I, you know, in, in 2 Corinthians 11 3, Paul says, I, I fear lest lest by cunning craftiness you might be deceived and beguiled by the serpent, just as Eve was, away from the simplicity of Christ. I, I think a lot of Christians were looking for this, this spectacular, supernatural, just yeah. God's going to come down from the heavens and smack me with truth, and I won't feel depressed or discouraged or inferior anymore. But that's not the truth. In, in, in Ephesians, he said, in Ephesians 3.19, he says, understanding God's love is to be filled with all the fullness of who God is. So when I truly see how much he loves me and why he made me and my purpose on the earth, guess what I am? I'm complete, lacking nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why? Because I, ha because I have all things currently? No, because I understand and believe and submit to what he says about Amen. me. Amen. So that brings out the resurrection part of that statement. I am the resurrection and the life. Yes. And you were just talking about how... Life is because of Christ. The resurrection part is also an important issue. Dead things made alive. Amen. He's resurrection. It's different than just being born again. This is taking stuff out of the dead and making them new and making them into life. And I, um, I am excited about that one. That's very very personal to me because I was a Christ rejecter, which is different than somebody who didn't know Christ. I mm -hmm. said, no, I was going to live it on my own. And the Holy Spirit, in his gracious goodness towards me, he resurrected me out of death and made me alive. This is so important to me. Resurrection. You know what's really important? He doesn't give a... I never see in the scripture where he said, you know, I, sorry, it, he's too dead. Right. Mm. There's never right. a, just too much. I can't deal with that much death. Come on. He always resurrects the oh, dead. Yeah. So the, the next one we, we've it. already talked about, he is the way, the truth and the yes. life. And then the last one is he is the vine. And we'll close on this one because we're out of time. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh, but John 15, 1. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Ending on that, we Christians, the believer, if you've accepted Jesus and made him Lord of your life, boss of your life, you live in Christ. You live in the vine. There is nothing lacking in you. Amen. There is nothing incomplete about you. So if you're having trouble seeing yourself the way that God has designed you, if that's your struggle, the only, now I'm going to be bold and say this, the only way to know who you are in Christ and to gain a healthy self-image for yourself is to spend time in the presence of God. That may be a long time prayer, devotions, it may be just you and the word, but if there's something very special about you, you, you said person, you're the subject, you being alone with the father. Right. 
in transparency. Yes. Going to church is great. That we need that. Going to Bible study is great. We need that. But I'm telling you from personal experience and just being around believers and helping people, there's something special about being in the presence of God Mm -hmm. that ministers to you, to you specifically. God wants to invade your life. He wants you to be free. It is a free gift. Freely he's giving. He's not, there's, there's no, there's no blockage on his end of the straw. Right. Okay. So if you're struggling, don't struggle no more. Get with him. Get with him. Amen. Amen. I also would like to suggest that people who do not know the in him scriptures, who we are in him, Mm -hmm. that little book by Brother Hagen called In Him. I I don't know how much it costs. I think it costs two dollars. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's just a small book, doesn't cost very much. Get it online. I think they may even have a PDF on it that's free. I don't really know. But it's just in him by Kenneth E. Hagan. That book has helped me immensely when I needed to remind myself of who I am in Christ. He said those are statements he said about himself, and then he said the the characteristics that I have, I gave to you because you're my kid. I gave Correct. them to you. Correct. So I'm I'm um I really I, I feel like sometimes people don't know how to search the scriptures. And that book has helped me that immensely. If you're listening and you are interested in that book and him, come see me. I'll give you one for free. So we love you guys. As Pastor John says, stay stirred.